Ilhan Omar has uh, been voted off the Foreign Affairs Committee in, of course, an unsurprising yet still very frustrating GOP uh, House decision. You know, she withstands the most attacks. There is no... It was already wild that she was on the Foreign Affairs Committee. That was definitely a Nancy Pelosi thing, for sure. In spite of, like, all of uh, Nancy Pelosi's, like, awful shortcomings uh, and, and being a horrible monster in general, that was definitely uh, something that she allowed the squad to do, especially as a green representative, right? I mean, this shit is so... <laughs> yeah, Black History Month started off strong, folks. Started off very, very strong, you know? And assholes. This debate today, it's about who gets to be an American. What opinions do we get to have, do we have to have to be counted as Americans? This is what this debate is about, Madam Speaker. There is this idea that you are a suspect if you are an immigrant, or if you are from certain parts of the world, or a certain skin tone, or a Muslim. It is no accident that members of the Republican Party accused the first black president, Barack Obama, of being a secret Muslim. Because to them, falsely labeling the first and only president of the United States of America, a Muslim and African immigrant, somehow made him less American. Well, I am Muslim. I am an immigrant, and interestingly, from Africa. Is anyone surprised that I am being targeted? Is anyone surprised that I am somehow deemed unworthy? By the way, I mean, she has to, like, hold firmly because uh, uh, the Democratic caucus is, you know, supposed to defend her in this circumstance. But make no mistake, the Democratic Party has routinely, routinely fucking uh, attacked Ilhan Omar just as much as the Republicans have. They are just as fucking awful as the Republicans are. Holy shit. They used to constantly throw her under the bus. They absolutely, at a time when, like, Donald Trump was basically showing her face on jumbotrons and on motherfucking rallies where they were, like, calling for her head, the Democratic Party regularly fed into that mania and said that she was anti-Semitic and she didn't actually deserve her committee positions either. So remember that. Ilhan Omar straight up, is the bravest member of Congress. I've said this before. Her and Rashida Tlaib especially as well. These people are getting attacked regularly by their own allies. Ilhan Omar, as a refugee that came to this fucking country, as a Muslim woman who wears the hijab, and as a progressive, has been called insane shit. Like, Tucker Carlson afforded time on the most popular news broadcast to this incredibly insane theory that she had married her brother like i cannot understand how that is allowed in this fucking allowed in any country in general and of course the new democratic leader is not going to stand up hakeem jeffries is not going to stand up in my opinion for ilhan omar jeffries on gop effort to remove ilhan omar from foreign affairs representative omar has made mistakes she has used anti-semitic tropes that were clearly unequivocally condemned by house democrats when it took place for years ago but what is going to take place on the floor today is not a public policy debate it's not about accountability it's about political revenge told you hakeem jeffries is aligned with the republicans when it comes to this issue he hates the progressive caucus like he has a personal vendetta against the progressives this is why i said hakeem jeffries is going to be fucking awful and also on top of that he is one of the most like pro unconditional support to israel congresspersons out there the House just voted to remove Ilhan Omar from a committee over her criticism of the pro-Israel lobby that at a time when Israel has completely ramped up its attacks on Palestinians and killed more than 30 people already this year. And the Democrats paved the fucking way. Make no mistake. You think the Democrats are not on board with this shit? You're wrong. For the chatters who are trying to say don't need people who are using anti-Semitic tropes on the Foreign Affairs Committee, you're delusional. Saying that APAC lobby has a stranglehold grip on the United States Congress and congressional members is a factually accurate statement. You are out of your fucking mind. It is literally a lobby, a very reputable and very powerful lobby, as a matter of fact. APAC has cut legislation in states where 
protesting, peacefully protesting Israel is illegal for public officials. That is completely against the First Amendment, like open and shut. This is not a conversation. And it's not just me saying that, you know, Hassan saying that. It's not Ilhan Omar saying that. It's motherfucking Dianne Feinstein and Bernie Sanders saying that. Dianne Feinstein is like 700 years old, and even she recognizes this reality. You cannot participate in boycotting, divesting, and asking for sanctions on the apartheid state of Israel in the United States of America if you want to be a public school teacher in the state of Texas and 35 other states. If I'm not mistaken, I think the number is 35. That is literally just anti-First Amendment. Jeffrey's offering extensive defense of Omar. Well, what, a, what a great defense. Is Ilhan Omar perfect? No, none of us are. We've all fallen short. Even when he's like defending her, he's like, oh, she's clearly made some mistakes. Like, fuck you, dude. Fuck you. Ilhan Omar is one of the fucking only voices. And even then, it's not like she's always uh, critically. Uh, it, it's not like she's always unconditionally against the military industrial complex, you know? Yeah, how dare anyone admit imperfection? There's a difference between literally offering credence and validity to the claims being made to unseat your party's own member from the foreign affairs panel and just admitting imperfection. You either are too stupid to recognize that or you right now are doing the exact same like, oh, baby shit thing. Just say it with your fucking chest. Say that you think Ilhan Omar is anti-Semitic and that's why she doesn't deserve to be on the foreign affairs panel. Why is it so, why are you so afraid in this community to fucking mention it? Are you worried you're going to get banned? It's crazy that calling out a religion on stuff they obviously got wrong is somehow anti that religion. Wait, what are you talking about? Criticism of the Israeli state is not a criticism of Judaism. Stop giving in to fascist Zionist propaganda. When you make an acknowledgement that Judaism represents Israel and Israel represents Judaism and the entire Jewish population around the planet, you are doing Bibi Netanyahu's bidding. That's not true. That is also anti-Semitic inherently. Of course, it's anti-Semitic if I say it. It's anti-Semitic if someone who is against the state of Israel says it. But it's completely not anti-Semitic when Bibi Netanyahu says it. I've never done Holocaust revisionism. He has. Yeah, the biggest L Israel ever took was allowing a president, allowing someone from Philadelphia to become their fucking leader, okay? That's true. Benjamin Netanyahu is from Philadelphia, for those of you who don't know. He went to school in Philly. The irony, of course, is that, like, Marjorie Taylor Greene way more recently said actually anti-Semitic shit, like Jewish space lasers caused the California wildfires, and because she's fucking Kevin McCarthy... And, of course, a Republican, more importantly than that, she gets to sit on committees, which is wild, okay? I hate Marjorie Taylor Greene, too, but isn't it a bit misogynistic to say she's fucking McCarthy? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. You know why? Because it's true. And also, it's not even about Marjorie Taylor Greene. That's more of a stain. That's Marjorie Taylor Greene has leveled up in that situation. It's, that's a benefit for her. It's more of a stain on Kevin McCarthy's uh, otherwise, I guess, uh, stainless reputation. That's not even true. That's why. There's a reason why I say they're fucking. It's because Kevin McCarthy has had uh, uh, extramarital affairs with other Republican congresspersons before. Oh, I also now think he's fucking uh, Kristen Cinema too. I think Kevin McCarthy might be, and I can't believe I'm using this term, the most rizzed up congressperson. Shit, you were right. I told you, yes, he's now, he's moved on from... Marjorie Taylor Greene to Kirsten Cinema. He is the Rizzler, low key or high key, I guess. Unfortunately, the truth. Mitt Romney's gonna be pissed. Yeah, Mitt Romney's gonna have some words with him. Jared Moskowitz, freshman Democrat congressman who voted against removing Omar from foreign affairs, says, "Make no mistake about it. My vote was not a vote in support of Congressman Omar. Someone with a record of hateful comments does not belong on the House Affairs Committee." House Foreign Affairs Committee. My vote was a vote to protect the institution for democracy and for preventing the weaponization of committee selection. When anti-Semitism arises in the halls of Congress, you will find me on the House floor calling out any members who display rabid anti-Semitism. I'm not, dude, I don't know what to say. Uh, like, I don't want to say things about Congress persons that uh, shit on Ilhan Omar and, and say that she's like a rabid anti-Semite. Not because like, I'll get banned immediately for a clear violation of terms of service, but I might get a call from Secret Service. Like the things I want to say 
about what I would like to do would probably have the Secret Service knocking down my door. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just, I think these people don't deserve the seats that they have is all I'm going to say. And no, saying it in Minecraft is not going to change that. Okay, you can't, you can't actually say that in Minecraft or in a video game. I think they know that that's like a, a, a secret way of saying what you mean. Yeah, they patched it. They're so stupid that they can't separate anti-Zionism from anti-Semitism. My friend, it's not stupidity. It's malicious. Understand that that is deliberate. That is by design. That is what the Anti-Defamation League does as well. It's on purpose. There is an active whitewashing operation of the Israeli state's crimes. It is an apartheid state, and it engages in human rights violations daily. If you're comparing... This to like your dad, you said, oh, well, some of it's stupidity. That's how it is for my dad. Yeah, of course. But these are people with institutional power. They're not behaving in the way that they are because they're like confused. Oh, duh, I didn't understand it. They know better. They just are, are a part of the machine. There is nothing consistent with the Republican Party's continued attack except for the racism and incitement of violence against women of color in this body. I had a member of the Republican caucus threaten my life, and you all and the Republican caucus rewarded him with one of the most prestigious committee assignments in this Congress. Don't tell me this is about consistency. Don't tell me that this is about an a, a condemnation of anti-Semitic remarks when you have a member of the Republican caucus who, have, who has talked about Jewish space lasers and an, an entire amount of tropes and also elevated her to some of the highest committee assignments in this body. This is about targeting women of color in the, in the United States of America. Don't tell me because I didn't get a single apology Time has expired. my life was threatened. Thank you. Sure, but Josie cares about resisting the DNC neoliberal class like she cares about defending her coworker. Dude, you popped off. You're right. AOC should be actually uh, creating an armed rebellion with all the Discord server members that you have. You and the fucking kitty little litter Discord is going to rise up in arms and fucking execute uh, Nancy Pelosi, actually. So you guys are you guys are right there, dude. Yeah. Average ultra leftist sitting in a Twitch chat. Exactly. Thank you for all your organizational efforts in building the the violent uh, Vanguard. That's that definitely happened. So that's sick, man. Thank you. I regularly criticize AOC and and uh, every other Congress member, every other uh, progressive member of the squad when they do things that are worthy of criticism. It's kind of dumb to to fucking do that in this circumstance. Like, I got it, dude. You just don't care. OK, you, you, you don't care about anything. You just care about like how you look in the chat. How many military bases have you overtaken with your with a, with a violent peasants rebellion that you're out here fucking talking shit? You know what I mean? What have you done? You've done nothing. Shut the fuck up. Here, you know what? It's worse actually. Someone just said leftists who uh, constantly shit on AOC and act like there's a violent revolution that is around the corner are worse than the three percenters are are just like the three percenters. No, they're worse than the three percenters because America. And other Western nations under neoliberal hegemony have a way higher likelihood of organizing fascist movements. So those guys actually do have structural power. Those guys actually do have the capacity to potentially create a fascist country. Three percenters have institutional support. They have members in the military. They have members in the police force. They have congressional members that listen to them. That, that abide by their wishes, but most importantly, they are just there to reinforce pre-existing oppressive hierarchies. So it's infinitely easier for them to organize and even act out on their violent desires without any kind of institutional scrutiny because they're going along with the system. The system does not want to defend trans people, gay people, black people, poor people. The system wants to cause them harm. So when you are on board with that and you're just saying like, I want to sidestep the government and do more of what the government is doing, you can organize and do violent shit. So they are more likely to get their uh, demands met. They're more likely to actually organize successfully. I mean, look at January 6th and its impact. Look at January 6th and its fucking outcome. Meanwhile, you're fucking freaking out at like four, five people that are trying to make the most of the fraction of power and, and I guess like proximity to institutional power that they have. 
in a moment where their cause is righteous and their cause is just. Yeah, Ilhan is literally being thrown off committees because she was against U.S. policy and, like, critical of Israel. Exactly. And also because it's, like, you know, it's a fun way to put a black Muslim woman down uh, It is that is, like, super socially acceptable by liberals and, and Republicans alike. And every single member of the media that goes, wow, I can't believe the Republicans did this, are also doing it while they played a role in this shit too they played a role in her demise every time she gets a fucking new death threat in her voicemail the media is complicit in that violence they too portrayed her like this demon this anti-semite you know fucking bullshit it's so disgusting here's an interesting you know they've been saying that there was a difference in, in how they did this and how the democrats did it. there was not the one last year, the Democrats, especially in, in like Marjorie Taylor Greene's case, was holding her accountable for before she's ever a member of Congress. Yeah, there's a difference. Ilhan Omar saying that the APAC lobby is incredibly powerful and influential is not anti-Semitic. It's just true. Marjorie Taylor Greene saying Jewish space lasers fucking caused uh, the, the wildfires in California is anti-Semitic and psychotic on top of that. Like, even if it wasn't anti-Semitic, even if she said just non-denominational space lasers actually cause california wildfires that should be enough that you should be like oh okay you're like schizophrenic i'm sorry you are now disqualified from being a, re a representative you know what i mean like you, you, do you see what i'm saying like even that statement alone without the classic like jews are controlling everything spice that you add on top of it should be enough for uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene to be removed from fucking literal uh, committee positions. Okay, yeah, <laughs> secular space lasers. Okay, got it. For the record, yes, saying Jewish space lasers are better than calling out Zionism because, like, Jewish space lasers are laughable, whereas calling out Zionist uh, uh, activity or the apartheid state of Israel is going to end up changing people's minds. Most people aren't going to think that, like, Jewish people actually have fucking space lasers. They're like, okay, you know, I'm anti-Semitic, but normal anti-Semitic. That shit even sounds crazy to me. Yeah, it's a trope. It's ridiculous. It's anti-Semitic. Make no mistake. But the other is real. The other thing is a real, valid criticism. We're not done with the Ilhan Omar stuff, by the way. Here, let's take a look at this. This is one death threat that she has received. One example. Nazi, you fucking cunt. I'll put a bullet in your fucking head and get the fuck out of my country, you cock-sucking bitch. I'll fucking kill you. To review, press zero. To reply, press <laughs> one. This is one example of a death threat that came into my office this week. These threats increase whenever Republicans put a target on my back. They continue to target me, but they will never stop me from fighting a more just world. By the way, as horrific as this is to listen to, I share it because the Republican Party and the public need to know that there is a very... By the way, Democrats play a role in this too. Sorry. Definitely the fucking truth. Yeah, this is what Pelosi and the rest of the congressional leaders published after Ilhan's It's All About the Benjamins tweet. Ilhan Omar said from the Israeli lobby, APAC is one of the main motivators as to why there is such a stranglehold in this fucking country where, remember, 35 states have a clear violation of the First Amendment where you can't protest the state of Israel and you have to sign a paper. Like, if you want to be a teacher in the state of Texas, you got to sign a paper that says you will promise to never protest the state of Israel. This is a real thing in this fucking country. And not a single one of these cock-sucking First Amendment defenders that literally lose their fucking shit on their podcast circuits ever talks about it. That's a real fucking First Amendment violation. Even you said that she shouldn't have said it in those words, though. No, not about the Benjamin shit. I don't give a fuck about the Benjamin shit. It was the other thing. The hypnotize uh, statement from like many, many years ago is what I referenced. 